Hi everyone, so today I want to talk about uncomputable functions and uncomputable numbers. So in this video, we're going to focus on mainly computer science and computability theory. So not necessarily following regular mathematics over here. And this is again a one of the most requested video and of course one of the most difficult to understand and confusing topics. So let's get started. So first of all, what is a computable function? So a function is considered to be computable if there exists an algorithm that computes an output. So basically very simple, if there's an algorithm, you can kind of say it's computable. If, it's for, uh, if, it's, if there's no algorithm to compute it, then it's uncomputable. So let's say you have a function fn equals m, n is the input, f is the algorithm and m is the output so this will be a computable function um, and on the, in the other words every computable function has a finite procedure um, giving an explicit and unambiguous instructions on how to compute it so the procedure has to be finite and it has to be explicit otherwise it's a uncomputable function you know you cannot have an infinite uh, long procedure uh, for example pi pi is actually a computable number because you know it has a finite procedure to calculate it even though it takes an infinite amount of time to calculate pi but the procedure is finite and is explicit so pi is a computable number um, and then same thing for computable number uh, another name for it or, or also known as a recursive number same thing for a uh, computable function another name for a computable function is called a recursive function so a computable number is basically uh, any real number that can be computed within any desired precision by a finite terminating algorithm basically with a turing machine so turing machine is the most powerful type of machine or computer that is of course used to calculate numbers um, and for in these two terms over here computable versus uncomputable number uh, in mathematics there's no straight mathematical definition actually so this that's why there's a lot of confusion and argument basically in terms of Google if fn of x is provable in the zfc set theory then x is set to be a computable number otherwise it's not a computable number if it's unprovable it's uncomputable um, and the notion of computable number does not coincide with that in mathematics because in mathematics basically it's saying every natural number is a computable real number um, but this is not necessary the case in Googleology or computer science so one of the I mean some of the most uh, well-known computable function is of course the Ackermann function the tree sequence SEG lotus sub function and you know G sequence the G function from Graham's number and also factorial basically any addition multiplication those kind of stuff they are all computable functions and uh, some examples of uncomputable function is of course the easy beaver function and the rails function um, and of course um, one of the example of a uncomputable number would be the Chaitin's constant or also known as the halting probability basically this number represents the probability that a randomly constructed program will halt obviously this is undecidable each holding probability is a normal and transcendental number, real number that is not computable, and which means there's no algorithm to compute its digits. And another way to look at or understand a uncomputable uh, number or function is to roll a die. So if the number, the only way to get the digits of a number is by rolling a die. So a dice have six choices, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And let's say your number has an infinite number of digits. Let's say it's a decimal number. If each digit is, you, um, the way you get it is by rolling a dice for each digit, then obviously that would be a uncomputable number. There's no algorithm to calculate it. Everything, you have to work out every number by rolling a dice. So that's another layman 
way to understand an uncomputable number. Um, but again, it's actually it's quite obvious uh, if there's an algorithm to calculate it. Uh, explicit algorithm is computable. If there's no algorithm, it's uncomputable. And some of the misconception about uncomputable function is that um, not all computable, uh, uncomputable functions grow faster than computable function. One good example would be this function over here, hn, which is uh, defined as 1 if the nth Turing machine holds and 0 otherwise. So the output of this function can only be 1 and 0. Even though this number, I mean this function is uncomputable, it can only have two outputs, so obviously this is not a fast growing function. And um, let's see, so Although not all com uncomputable functions are fast going, obviously, this would be an example. However, the f fastest function, fastest going function ever known, they are all uncomputable. And then um, for another misconception is that uh, we will never know the output of the uh, of a uncomputable number. I mean, uncomputable function. Of course, that's not the case. The example would be the BCP function. So we actually know some of the output of these BCP function. So BB1 equals 1, BB2 equals 4, BB3 equals 6, BB4 equals 13, and BB5 is known to be at least um, equal to 4098. This one is not confirmed yet because there are still some Turing, I mean, there are still some machines running. So you have to wait until all the machines finish, then you will get the final answer to see if it's actually 4098. So again, there's no uh, algorithm to calculate this number. However, there are still some ways to find out the output. It's not by calculating, Is the only way is by looking at all the Turing machines. So basically, you have to let it run until they all finish. So BB1 is 1, BB2 with two symbols is 4, BB3 is 6, and I think this one takes a very, very long time to finally get the results of 13. You have to wait until all the machine finish. And this is the number of Turing machines that you have to look at um, in order to find out these outputs. So 4n plus 4 to the power of 2n, this is the number of machines. So let's say uh, n in this case would be 4, you plug 4 in here. So of course the number of train machines you have to look at is a big number itself and you have to wait all of them to finish. That's the only way to find out some of the smaller outputs. And therefore <laughs> it's actually possible to know some of the outputs. But for bigger n, that's another story. And for BB6, it's known to be at least this number over here. Uh, and again, uh, let me repeat this. So if Fn of x is provable in the ZFC set theory, then x is computable. If it's not provable in this set theory, then x is not computable. And actually, this number over here, busy beaver 1919 is the smallest known value of the busy beaver function that is undecidable or unprovable in the CFC set theory, or you can say it's independent of the CFC theory. So in other words, this number is a uncomputable number. And basically, in other words, it's bigger than any computable number because any computable number uh, and is said to be computable, it is provable. Since this is not provable, it's greater than any computable number and same thing for any number that is bigger than BB1919 and of course Bayou's number which is obviously bigger than this one uh, and basically what it means is that undecidable means you cannot prove is true or you cannot prove is untrue in the CFC set theory so you cannot tell you cannot prove it will hold or not so it will just keep running printing out more and more ones on an infinite tape and you will never know if it's gonna stop or not so that's why this number is bigger than any computable number so anyway um this is my take on what is a computable functions on what is an uncomputable function and what is uncomputable number and thanks for watching and have a nice day